Shalom and blessings. Blessings to you all saints. This continues to be the day that Yahweh has made and I will certainly rejoice and be glad in it. Yahweh remains faithful. His mercies, as the scripture state, endures forever. His truth is also everlasting. I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful uh, to have been chosen to submit to, to believe in, to obey the truth of Yahweh's word. I greet you today and I bid you all Shalom. Please let me know whether you can hear clearly and you can see clearly. And if you can, and if you can, invite someone who you know is normally live with us on the broadcast. Let them know that we're here. I know the sister Melanie, she doesn't receive notifications, uh, Prophet Eshenir, and quite a few others. As always, uh, Sister Petal, so good to see you. Blessings and shalom to all of you, Adasa, all of you saints. Thank you for the feedback, uh, Denise. Let me also uh, share with you that some persons have difficulty receiving notifications. It could be because there's what's called an algorithm, where Facebook determines uh, who gets notified and everything else. Also, it could be that your app needs to be updated. Uh, and finally, it could also be, which is highly unlikely, Facebook is just seeking to target my page. They don't draft for stuff like this. They normally do it when I deal with homosexuals and, and LGBT alphabet gang. But you're here. And I'm so glad that I'm seeing some of you. Of course, I need to inform you all, some of you. If you're a friend on Facebook, the times on Facebook will give me, on my screen, a notification that you're watching. So if you'd like to watch this broadcast in a state of uh, incognito, in hiding, it's not advisable to do so live. So you can wait till it's over and then, uh, so I won't have to see that you're here. All right, exactly my point. I'm seeing some people who have never seen before and just eager to see what I have to say because of this uh, prevailing matter. And you are eager to hear that which I have to declare. Welcome. I didn't invite you, you chose to be here. So welcome. Honor your mother and father. And the subtitle is, When the Wicked Quote Scripture. From that very statement, When the Wicked Quote Scripture, you should immediately as a saint know that this spells trouble. But it's not an unusual circumstance, but we'll dis discuss it further today. Honor your mother. And some certified serpents will say, thank you, Troy, for the feedback. Honor thy mother. They go all the way back to Old English. And thy father, so that thy days may be long. Because that's all they will say. And that's all they can say. This broadcast today is being done as the Apostle Shaul would have had to do regarding some of his sons in the faith. If you read scripture carefully, and I assume those of you who read your Bible, though you're not saved, the Apostle Shaul would have mentioned certain sons of his. And he wrote to some of them to inform them about how they should interact with each other. He mentioned them by name. He spoke in defense of some of his sons. I think it was Philemon or one of those he wrote to him. He said, I'm sending uh, my son to you and you owe, remember that you owe me your life. The Apostle Shul had some very strong words in Scripture the two church people cannot handle today. I'm talking about your Jesus church ones. You claim to love the Word and the Lord and God, but you love the God of this world who has perverted your mind to such an extent that you are incapable of receiving the truth though you read it. Yahweh is all wise and is considered the only wise God. Therefore, in everything that he did, his wisdom must be honored by a saint, valued by a saint, and his wisdom must be what guides a saint. Yahweh is not crazy. 
Yahweh is not alarmed or surprised by anything that happens in our life. And as a result of that, there has to be a reason why Yahweh would have caused uh, my daughter in the faith in Susan Hamilton to shine so effortlessly at this time. If you recall what I said to you, Rosh Hashanah, if you're a saint, it was clear that at this time, when you're shining effortlessly, I said, do not think it's because people say nice things about you. It will be where your old family will begin to target you for words of accusation and unkindness. Who you think you are? You think you're better than anybody else? And they begin to despise you. I said that to you in September at Rosh Hashanah because I know what Yahweh was saying to me. In shining effortlessly, persons have begun to highlight me, Nigel London. And I'm elated about it. Why am I elated about it? Because remember what Yahweh said at Rosh Hashanah. I am therefore going to present this broadcast to you and speak to you as saints. I'll tell you why. Because I have heard as clearly as ever. And if there's one thing my wife would tell you, and probably my children would tell you, especially my wife, because she dealt with me for years with this, I hear things without seeing people say it. Accurately, precisely, almost verbatim. That's why some of you have an issue with me, because they believe that somebody tells me something. I hear things as clearly as ever. And I'm hearing the murmuring of those of you who say you believe in Yeshua over Susan Hamilton's actions. I hear it as loudly as ever. I hear you're being disgruntled about how the situation was handled because you have, all of a sudden, a better way to deal with it. Let me inform you that if you claim to not be an apostle of the Lord Yeshua, a prophet of Yahweh, a teacher, evangelist, or pastor. You have none of the ascension gifts as they're called. None of the gifts given to equip the saints and to edify the body. You claim that you have none of them, but you, all, you now have a recommendation as to how to handle a spiritual matter. You are already usurping authority and in trouble. I'm saying to those of you who say you believe Yeshua, you follow Apostle Thomas, you follow Apostle Nigel London, you follow all these people, but you now have a varying view to that which the apostles of the Lord Yeshua have all agreed is a godly matter. You're in trouble. The reason why many of you cannot in any way handle that which my daughter Susan would have done in publicly redressing now, I'll teach you some English words today because some of you need to understand what I'm saying to you as clearly as ever. Although you wouldn't. To give redress to a matter, there is some addressing a matter. To address something, it means you can just speak to it. Probably without anybody having said anything. But to give redress to something means somebody had to say something before you. And then you are addressing that erroneous, wicked, negative, misguiding, unscrupulous individual. Susan gave redress to a matter. She didn't address a matter. And in giving redress to a matter, the serpents, the scorpions, the pit vipers, the hogs, because pigs are too decent to call you, the hogs, the absolute spiritually retarded individuals decided that they have scripture to offer and the scripture was honor your mother and father period when last week I told you all that's exactly what you will say this week you had to say it what I find interesting is that those who say honor your mother and your father cannot show me one piece of evidence of them honoring theirs now, if you recommend to me that I should honor my mother and my father, I would like to think that you have some degree 
of evidence to show that you have consistently honored yours. I know some of you women, because you were once young, and I'm not saying this with any degree of caution, I know some of you who have said that Susan should honor her mother and father. I know your parents never taught you or told you that sleeping, sexing around with multiple men is dishonorable. Or is on, they never told you it's honorable. They would have told you it's dishonorable. They would have told you that if you're female and you want to bump your vagina with other females, it is dishonorable because you call a sodomite. In Ghana, you call you a sanamite. I like what that sounds. They would have informed you that lesbianism is outright wicked, outrightly wicked. How could then you present a matter to honor some parent when you are totally dishonorable? I'm about to address you all this afternoon and give redress to some of you. You can't be a full-blown sodomite, sir, and telling, tell my child to honor her mother and father unless your father told you that burglary is a healthy thing. You should never claim to be a Christian and your mother or father speaks to you, you disrespect them in the house, but you're in a broadcast or a, a post saying, honor your mother and your father. To honor a parent doesn't mean you say honor your mother and your father. Yeshua said it in scripture. You say that you honor your mother and your father, but you have no regard for them. You give them presents at, 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 at various times. You give them gifts, he said. And say, I've honored you. But you disrespect them. It's in the scripture, Matthew chapter 15. To honor means, and you've heard me speak of my father, Errol London. To hold them in such high esteem that they are always right in your eyes. Do you honor your mother and your father? Come, let's talk. Call the devils out on the broadcast because you're watching me. So you might as well come out. I see you. So don't me call your name. Can you please? Say that if you see everything that your parent does as right, do you? Then you're not honoring them. It's hot, Marsha, and it gets even hotter in a minute. There are certain scriptures that devils will have to use. Judge not. He who has no sin casts the first stone. That's all I can tell you. Take the, the, the beam out of your eye. Before you take the speck out of my eye. Honor your mother and father. Why would they find these scriptures? Because these are the texts that put them in a corner. And they cannot deal with it. Apostle Thomas in the spirit. That's why you're my brother. I'm going there. We go to Ephesians 6 in a minute. So what we have to get clear this afternoon is first of all. I am speaking publicly. In defense of a child in the faith of mine. Why? Because that's what a man does. Nobody comes after my family. None. Especially my children. The sons, you males, you know that. I leave some of you all to fight for yourself because you're a man. You go out there and you deal with what you have to deal with. But my daughters, I don't play with them. I do not play with my daughters. That is why many young men have said to even my, my eldest, I was afraid to tell you anything because your father is a crazy guy. Your father isn't too straight and they're telling the truth. I do not play with my children. My daughters must know that if I breathe my last breath in this minute, they must be able to say that for all of my life of knowing my father, he has never once cause anybody to disrespect me, to ill-treat me, to dishonor me, and he was quiet about it. Never. Any young man who wants to date or marry my child, and you don't have the chutzpah, the gall, the intestinal fortitude to defend my child, get lost. My child will never marry a chicken. If you can't speak for my child's well-being, get... You won't even be my face. That's it, get, get with five, ten T's at the back. Get him a long get.
No man, even husband, can disrespect my child and get away with it. None of them. Why? Because when Susan gets married, her husband has a standard to attain. So you can't tell me he never saw me defend my child. And you saints need to hear this because you're being drawn away with deception. You're being drawn away and enticed by opinions, not truth. My wife will tell you that you know sometimes mothers can, can become very upset with children because they're overdoing it. But my wife will tell you the times that I tell her, no, don't say it like that. Mm -mm. No. Don't tell them that. Do not say that. I may project my voice to my children to hear me, but I don't, I don't shout at my children to say, you're, you're stupid, you're dog. I don't do that. I do not say things to my daughters ever, even my son. Yet some of you wonder, why are so, so many people so close? Why are so many persons so attached to me? Stay tuned and you'll hear. One said the scripture already, he was that's in, I know that. Who? Alexis. Alexis Charles. Oh, the donkey of the week. Those of you who are aware of the fact that it requires a degree of strength that's only divine for a child in this context of spring of, not by age, for a child to proclaim publicly that I will only follow righteousness. I will not associate with a wicked parent who disregards, disrespects, dishonors the truth and lies blatantly. I will not do that. It requires divine grace to do that. Because many of you have opinions about my daughter's actions, have no evidence of strength in yourself. You stood for nothing. And if you have stood for nothing, you dare not criticize one who stands for something. What have you ever stood for? What have you ever boldly defended in terms of a conviction? Some of you, nothing. Apart from he didn't, you didn't text me today. You didn't call me today. This is discomforting and disquieting for some of you devils because you are not accustomed to any preacher in Guyana. And I'm saying, not saying this loose, lightly. You're not accustomed to any Jesus preacher in this country speaking to you so forcefully, accurately, and without any degree of fear. You, all, you can't handle that, and I know it. So you have to seek by all means to present some, 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 some loose, uh, ghetto-like comment, because that's all you can offer. But not here. And somehow today, I am feeling the unction to block some of you. So you have to create a fake account as quickly as possible so you can return to, to speak like a fool. Interestingly, in this period in Guyana, when so many preachers, 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 not, not the deacon, not the keyboard player, preachers are on record of telling young ladies they'll bugger them and all that. The pastor, you have nothing to say. 
But when somebody is saying, my children shall function by righteousness, I'll function by the scripture alone, you are on the page because that's how snakes function. Let me take you to the text, Exodus chapter 20. And I'll show you how dangerous some of you are making your lives. First of all, you do not, let me make clear to you, you don't even, you who had something to say, do not keep the law. But you rush to quote a text from a law. That's the first problem you have. You don't keep the law. But you rush to quote something from the law, Torah. Not recognizing that scripture is plain. It is going to cause you to be judged severely. Because you're making an announcement of Yahweh's standard, but you can't keep it. I just love how Yahweh said some of you all have to destroy you. So let's see who Yahweh spoke to in scripture. Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. Verse 1. Then Elohim said these words. I am Yahweh. He never said Adonai because he never called himself Adonai. I am Yahweh your God. Who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Out of the abode of slavery. First question since you're so brilliant. To whom was Yahweh speaking? Apostle Thomas said, Apostle you need to come and join me live in this broadcast because you're certainly in my head all afternoon. To whom was Yahweh speaking? Let me see if you can answer. Was Yahweh telling Guyanese a, a, a statement here? Was he talking to some European person hiding in a bush, some, some, some Caucasian person? To whom was he speaking? Thank you, girlfriend. Apostle Thomas Sanson, he gave you all a head start. Yahweh said, I am Yahweh your, not a God. Yahweh in any dictionary, in any encyclopedia would be considered the God of Yisrael. Or you see the God of Israel. He is the God of Yisrael. That's what he's called in scripture. So when Yahweh says, I am Yahweh, your God, he's only speaking to one set of people. The scripture records, Yahweh never gave the law to the Gentiles. Yet some of you can't get that swallowed that for the rest of your life, especially Adventist people. It's written, Yahweh never gave the law to the Gentiles. Never. Read Timotheus. So if he was speaking to his people, second question for you. Did Yahweh give one part of Israel the law and told the rest of them, you all are free to do what you want, or was it all of Israel who had the law? And it's not a true question either. Did Yahweh give one set of Israel at this time right here when they were leaving Egypt? Or we gave all of Israel the law? Where are my quick typers today? Who will win? My, here's your phone. My son said me. Somebody said no, exactly. Yahweh would have given all of Israel the law. Get this. It means, therefore, saints, that every parent, every child in Israel were bound by the same principles, the same Torah, which means teachings. They were all governed by the same thing. That's why they had to hear it all the time. They were taught all the time. They were instructed in, through Moshe to tell your children this all the time. When they grew older, they had to go to tabernacle, to the temple, to the temple, to hear the reading of scripture all the time. Because all of Israel are bound by the same thing. Kev, good to see you. Bless you, uh, sis. You got it? You have it? All of Israel function by the same rule. So if everybody in Israel would have been the same thing. Some of y'all will get her attack in a minute. It means then that everybody in Israel were subjected to the same penalty. Are you there? Good. So if the father of one of these children committed adultery according to what the law states, what happened to that child in terms of father? The father was stoned to death. So that household was fatherless. I hope you begin to get the picture. If the mother committed adultery 
and the mother was caught in the act. The mother and the man is stoned to death. So that child has no mother. I hope you get in the picture. Yahweh said if a young lady is caught in fornication, she and the young man must be stoned to death. Are you getting the picture? So all of Yisrael had to function even if one of them broke Shabbat. In certain instances, they were stoned to death. Do you understand now that Yahweh, in speaking to Yisrael, bound them all, according to scripture, all were bound by the law, so all could be called guilty, needing Messiah. Under the law, they were all bound, all deemed guilty, so they all have to look for Messiah, because they couldn't keep the law. How many of you who rush to say, oh, I'm talking to you, Yeshua and Yahweh proclaimers here. I'm not talking to Jesus, but you who have an issue with this matter, I'm talking to you. How many of you can even abide by that principle? Where you have no power to stop anybody from stoning your father to death because you know that according to the law, your father deserved death. Can you live by that? Or will you have to defend your parent because after all is my father? You can defend no father in Israel if he, if he did a crime that was worthy of death. If your mother did something that was worthy of death, you can defend her in Israel. You have to agree with them being stoned. Can you live by that? But you want to tell me on your mother and father when you can't live by, what, live by what the law says? Wicked people, when they approach scripture, it is never to extract truth from it. It is always to accuse you because they are of their father, the devil. Now I'm talking to you, Jesus, but whenever you extract a text, it's for your detriment. Because you cannot abide by the truth. Do you know what it is like? For somebody to see or hear their father simply touched or try, tried to touch the ark of the covenant. He didn't touch Yahweh, he just touched a symbol of Yahweh's presence and Yahweh killed him. You know how that feels to you to know that how could you do this to my father? What did he do? You shouldn't have that luxury. Because then if you try to challenge Yahweh, he could strike you and kill you instantly as he could now. What some of you can't grasp is that I am totally prepared totally prepared to live by what Yahweh dictates which is why I teach my children remain, don't run yet that if I am being dishonorable to the truth leave, haven't you heard me say that for years of my life without explaining, don't you because I live by what I say I live by what I say. Here's a demon, Everton Tannen, who's without sin cast the first stone. They can't help it. And I told you already you're non-existent. Because you didn't read the Bible, it says that saints are chosen Yeshua to be blameless and holy. Blameless, without spot and holy. It's a bit difficult for you to comprehend that, but it's written. Whom he would have called, he justified. To justify in scripture means to render faultless, without guilt. So it would do well to come in front of my gate and make that statement. And I wouldn't miss. I have said this repeatedly. I have told every saint, if I do not abide by the truth, do not follow me. How can I make such a bold statement to my children? How? 
Because when you are aware of who keeps you, your decorations are not made out of human pride. They made in confidence to Yahweh's word and the power of it. Yahweh said he's able to keep you from stumbling. That's written. Yet, the fools say, he was without sin. Y'all can't process through it. He could keep a saint. He said, if you're tempted by anything, he has already made a way of escape. Yet, he was without sin cast the first stone. It, it, you can't help yourselves, I understand. In every temptation, Yahweh makes a way of escape. Why? Because Yahweh has made a provision within himself to keep his people. Because the body of Messiah has to be pure. The Jesus church is the only place where the head is pure and the body is always sick with cancer, uh, uh, diseases. I'm talking about sin here. Leprosy, y'all are stink with sin. But your head is so holy. Yahweh preserves the righteous. Listen to the term. Righteous. Not trying to be righteous. So we've, we've already covered the fact that Yahweh, the truth, that Yahweh gave his instruction to his people, nobody else. If you're not his person, he didn't talk to you. It's that simple to me. Now we go to another text. So we already established here that Yahweh was speaking to his people, gave his people who are all bound by the same law an instruction. So they all have to follow it. Let's go to the, because the text says, so that your days may be long. Important. Your days in living can be long. <laughs> I can help you out with this. I have seen preachers across the world and the, the minions rush to this text. Oh, they love this text badly. On a mother and father, whenever a child comes to pass for counseling, the pastor has to put you down because you're, you're rude. I'm talking about Jesus' church now. And the pastor says, honor your mother and your father. And they'll tell you this, this is the commandment to promise. Sounds good, doesn't it? Okay. What they don't understand is this. That your days may be long is not a promise that you'll have a wonderful long life and um, as if there's some reward for you somewhere along the line. That's what we always say to them. You know. But today I'll give you ex the, the exact understanding of what the text says. In the same scripture Yahweh states, if a man or woman, parents, have a rebellious child, child, son, or daughter, you must take that child to the elders of the city. And at the gate you say to them, my son is stubborn. He does not hear me or his mother. Look at this. The elder shall then stone or command that he be stoned to death. Do you get it? So if you don't honor your mother and your father, your days are shortened by stoning. I hope it's clear for you now. Instead, if you give a mother to fathers, they give a mother's they give. Some you don't have to give mother fathers they give anyway, because she's too manly. If you give your father a father's day gift, uh, your days will be long. He's not never said that. He's saying that in the presence of rebellion, you shall live a very short life because you'll be stoned to death. Yet they bring this Torah to you now and then tell you you're not under the law, but this is the law. And today you'll sing. I would advise you that when you're on a broadcast, you pay attention to what the topic is and ask questions in keeping with that. I have a very great difficulty dealing with people who go way off course. For what reason, I don't know. Who was Cain's wife in the jungle? Who said he lived in the jungle? You're asking about Tarzan or Cain? Ask me a question on the point.
So we go to Ephesians 6 understanding clearly that Yahweh was speaking to Israel. And when he said your days would be long, he was saying they would not be stoned to death if they honored their parents. Now, Ephesians chapter 1. You need to see that. Ephesians 1. Because what I understand with people who, and I call you Jesus people for a reason, because you're not of Yeshua. You are of an erroneous, deceiving, Eurocentric individual, fully of anti Messiah. You are anti Christ. That's why I call you Jesus people. You're not of Yeshua. Go to Ephesians 1. Because if you go into the new covenant and you try to quote the new covenant without quoting who was Shaul speaking to, you are crazy. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 1 from Shaul by Yahweh's will, an emissary of Messiah Yeshua. To Elohim's people living in Ephesus. To Elohim's people. To Yahweh's people living in Ephesus. You need to hear this, saints. To Yahweh's people living in Ephesus. To Yahweh's people. To Yahweh's people. How much clearer can this be? To Yahweh's people. Shaul, Kepha, Yochanan, uh, none of the emissaries, Yaakov, none of them wrote a letter to the wicked. Not one of them. I don't know where you people get this notion from. That demons could run to your Bible and throw scripture up there and you church people agree with it. Not understanding that, that wicked people can only present you with scripture for one reason. And it's not because they want you to obey the truth. They want to accuse you of wrong. To Yahweh's people living at Ephesus. He wasn't speaking to the Ephesians in general. He was speaking to Yahweh's people living at Ephesus. Saints, these things sound simple, but they're very, very crucial to your understanding. So, the weight of responsibility is on Yahweh's people living in this area. What did he tell Yahweh's people? Now he's speaking to Yahweh's people, children. What you should do in union with the Lord, in union, not in separation from him, being one with Yeshua the Messiah. Look at this. Apostle Thomas alluded to it earlier. Like that's why it is in the spirit. It says, obey your parents. Now the demons went to honor your mother and father. They didn't even touch obey your parents, which came before this. Why is that so important? You'll hear now. How can you tell me or tell my daughter, honor your mother and your father without addressing obeying your parents? So I will ask you, and I dare one of you devils who are in hiding on this broadcast right here to come out and answer this question or these questions. You wouldn't do it even if somebody had a gun to your head. You wouldn't answer. You prefer to die than tell the truth. But what I know is, like when Stephen was speaking, there's something called the pricking of your conscience. It will make some of you all so cold in your house right now because you attacked my daughter. And now you'll understand how stupid you will look publicly. Because you can't even answer the public in this page. Lisa Odessa Robertson, answer. Daryl O'Neill. Simon, you will answer. Roshana Haynes, you shall answer. I dare you. Simone Ben Cain, I dare you to answer. Shakaria Haynes, I dare you to answer. Alexis Charles, come out of your pit and answer. 
I dare you all by name to answer. When I begin to, the, the scripture is plain. Children, obey your parents. I don't see anything here for an option because some of you don't understand what obedience means. You will do exactly what you're told. That's obedience. Now let me begin with the question then. And I dare you all to come out of your pit to answer me. Now. Or you can call your pastor or your apostles to represent you. Or your parents. To come on my broadcast and answer my question right here. Question number one. If your mother or your father. You obey your parents. So I'll therefore bring both of them in the equation. If your parents should bring. Not your boyfriend. A man that you hate. You single ones. And said to you, this man you will have sex with today. Will you do it? I know at least one of y'all in this house will say yes. Because I know you well enough. You'll do it with anybody. But for the rest, who have a modicum of decency, would you do it? Come out and answer because you have to obey your parents. What you will now try to do is to qualify the statement with an explanation. I don't want explanation because you said obey. You didn't even mention that. You said honor. So honor is directly attached to obedience. Obedience is directly attached to honor. You can never honor your parents if you don't obey them. So since you're telling Suzanne to honor your mother, regardless of what it is, I'm asking you a question. Alison Cromwell, you will answer. Come out. Anne-Marie Cromwell. You got many names. Anne-Marie Cromwell Barker. Come out and answer. This is what you all can't handle, can, is it? Because the sissified preachers in Jesus' camp can't do what I'm doing. They're afraid. So they go in their closet, as one of them said, and they'll pray for you. I would never pray for one of y'all. I will call you to the fore to answer the question. You haven't answered question number one yet, so I'll give you time. You can type it in the rebroadcast since you're watching it in secrecy. Number two, if your father comes home as drunk as ever, and your father brings your brother to you and say you have to have sex with your brother now will you do it because you have to honor your father and you have to honor your mother and honor is directly attached to obedience so Connie Blair has come out of his political shell to make a statement no good parents it should be no good parent will do that to their children sir Sir, I never asked you whether the, the parent was good or bad because if you say the parent is bad, you dishonor them. So you've just established my point. The moment, the moment you say, Mr. Canibri, that no good parent will do this, you have established my point that the, you can't, if you say the parent is no good, you've dishonored them. So make up your mind. I'm going for the honor your mother and father clan. If you say honor your mother and father, then you have to obey them. Jeffrey LaRose can bring, bring him out or bring his wife. Maybe she can speak for him. She has a bit more sense. Honor your mother and father is directly attached to obedience. You cannot separate the two. If your mother tells you that your husband is a soft man, he ain't got it going on. You church Jesus bats. So she's advising you to sleep with Deacon Tom. Or Deacon Henry. Will you go have sex with him? Because you have to honor your mother and father. You have to obey your parents. The moment you say, no, I'm not doing that, you've dishonored them. You haven't honored what they've said. Come and answer, since you have so much to say. Simone Ben, I think your father's a preacher. So you will answer. 
So all of you will now say, no, I wouldn't do that. You have just announced Susan's point. That there are certain things you cannot honor. Regardless of who it comes from. Get the point now? So don't come with this blanket statement about honoring your mother and your father. Yahweh spoke to Yisrael, Shaul spoke to the saints because he understood that if they are not in union with Messiah, how can you honor wicked people? Come and answer. We're waiting for you all. We have a lot of time today. If I decide that I will go on a hunger strike and I will not eat until your land side be dead, because you can't answer my question. Are you aware of the fact that there is therefore, I say again, some situations in which you cannot honor a parent because the parent is wicked or requiring of you what to do what is wicked? Some of you say that's extreme. Now, let me simplify it for you. Let me bring it down to a bit more uh, doable things to some of y'all. Your mother decides, or your father decides, that they are going to have, because they party, they don't go to church like you. They're in the church business. So they're going to have a party. And at the party, they say, well, all right then, everybody has to take a drink or two for your dead grandmother. Would you drink liquor? If you say, Daddy, I wouldn't drink. Again, I know some of y'all in this, this, this group that I'm listing here who would certainly drink it. But the rest of you have a modicum of decency. Or try to appear decent. Would you drink the liquor in memory of your grandmother who's dead? The moment you say, no, I wouldn't drink liquor, Daddy, you have dishonored the person. Because you've disobeyed them. I will therefore expound by telling you that I will never honor Errol London in wickedness. Never. I am not commanded to do it. And that's my father. <laughs> Javon says some of them will drink the whole bottle. <laughs> that I know for sure. And ask for second. I will never honor my father, Errol London, in wickedness. I have never been instructed to do so. I praise Yahweh that my father, Errol Sherman London, lives and would have lived such an exemplary life that I have no choice but to honor him. I live before my children the principle I would dare any one of them even this broadcast right here or come on, online to tell me when I've ever told you that what is wrong is right because I'm your father or truth is false because I'm your father or false is true because I'm your father I dare my wife to say that It is never right because I do it. There is a standard because I say to my children all the time, my son, Pastor Reginald Williams, Woody and all of y'all, all of them know what I say to them. When I die, I don't want to bury one of my children. Yahweh knows my heart, but he's all wise. Should I die before my offspring? They must stand if the, my body is found, because I know where I'll die. But if they have my body before, then they must say, that remains the body of a righteous man, an upright man, a man who never told me that what is wrong is right. You're asking, you are actually demanding as a Jesus clown that a righteous young woman 
must disassociate from one of my standing to hold on to a wicked lying person. That's what you're requiring of her. Akani, if you see this as abuse, you should get out of politics. You should be more tougher than this. Because during political time, you didn't tell Granger that. When you were running for a new United Guyana, you didn't tell them that they should not be throwing stones at each other. So get lost. You should be the last one to talk about insulting people or abusing your audience. When they're speaking in a manly, tough manner, become abuse. Are you that soft and you're a politician? That's my issue with some of y'all men. Y'all are way too soft. These young men in Guyana, I, I, I fear for y'all. I don't know what y'all getting married to in, in, in this nation nowadays. F and it's the men. From the time you raise your voice, why are you abusing me? Do you, do you know y'all sound when you do that? Why are you talking in such a harsh manner? Do you know you sound when you do that? Where are the men, Guyana? Yahweh knows that if my grandfather... Walter Banks London were alive and he talked to some of y'all men, y'all be crying. His voice was like, a th it was like thunder. You'll start hollering and cry. Because I can't talk to you hard and you're crying already. I keep telling you, I was never raised a sissy. I was raised a man. I was never raised to be a soft, wimpish person. What is it? Why are so many men having such an issue with how I speak? You are a man. Women don't do what y'all do for the greater part. So the scripture says, children, obey your parents in union with Messiah. Obey them. Being united with Messiah. Now, you've, I've proven to you, I have proven to you all, that none of them who are watching me in hiding could come out and answer. Not one of them. So you can therefore not ask Susan, my daughter, to honor anything that you would not honor. He said, obeying your parents, and some of you should have common sense. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Now watch this. Is it right to obey your mother to go sleep with your brother? Does it not tell you that the obedience here is entirely about godliness? And righteousness? Is it right to obey your father to drink liquor in memory of your grandmother? That's it, Felix Primo. Some of them are never in the army. If some of y'all join the army, you'll cry like girls. Because nobody can shout at you. There has to be some qualifying standard, some, some something set, where all of the saints at Ephesus knew that obedience to my parent is bound by unity with Messiah. Nothing else. The next thing that you're missing is this. Upon attaining adulthood, am I still a child? I'm speaking chronologically here. Am I still a child? I don't have to answer because you know the answer. When you attain adulthood, Obedience is not about instruction in reference to parent-child relationship. It's more about counsel. I consider the advice of my father. My father doesn't instruct me to govern my house. I'm speaking to parent-son relationship. Father-son relationship. Because I'm a man. I have children of my own. If 
if your parent is not united with Messiah, they'll instruct you to disobey the truth. That's why they tell some of y'all, you have to keep Christmas. And you do it. Because after all, it's my mother. And mommy will be embarrassed. So you disregard Yahweh's word. You say, I know it's pagan. But I have to keep Christmas with my family because of family tradition. You are wicked. You must honor them in union with Messiah. Not being against Messiah. <laughs> That's the sister Mish. Let's go on. Honor your mother and father's court. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment that embodies a promise. So that it may go well with you. Why? If you don't honor them, you stone to death. And you may live long in the land. Mr. Blair, I will speak to you once more. If there has to be another way to deliver my message, go live and show me how to do it, please. I am waiting for you to lead by example. Until you go live and you show me how to deliver my message, you have to deal with this. I didn't invite you here. And if Guyana had more men with my attitude, all this election fiasco that you all had recently would never happen. And this thievery in government would never happen. And this sissy glorification in Guyana would never happen. It's interesting that your political party, Akani Blair, is so lofty in their eyes for the view of homosexuality to the extent that they said they intended to have it in schools. I could understand why they don't like me talking hard. Honor your mother and father is a commandment that embodies a promise. The promise is if you want to live, you'd better honor them because you'll be stoned to death. Verse 4, and verse 4 is critical to my addressing you saints who are carried away with error. It is necessary. Ephesians 6 verse 4. Fathers, male, do not irritate your children and make them resentful. None of you could quote that part. Instead, Raise them with the Lord's kind of discipline and guidance. What was the Lord's kind of discipline and guidance? To accept wickedness? Raise them. Do not irritate them and make them become resentful. He's speaking to fathers in the church. What this? It may be good for somebody to get a dictionary it's on your phone, so use it. What is the opposite of resentment? Or the word to resent? Type it and put it for somebody to see. Find it. Because if the father does not resent, or if the child doesn't resent the father, the child is something else. Because this will address I can't eat Mr. Blair. How are you going to ask me on my broadcast what are my thoughts are you, man? Listen, big man. Stop while I have a chance, please. Don't do this. You, you cannot be serious, man. You my broadcast ask me what are my thoughts about you? Seriously? Lord, 
All right. I pretend I didn't see that. I just pretend I didn't really, I, I didn't read what you said. Mr. Blair, I didn't read what you just said. Let's just, let's just act as though you didn't say that. Anybody found it yet? Where's my dictionary, Kasha? Who posted it? You can't. No, 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 not there. <laughs> Resent. There you go. But Toby loves words. He's a, he loves words. To favor. Watch this. Did anybody observe? Did anyone observe? One of the main criticisms here is why are these young ladies so close and so favored towards Nigel London? Why, why, is it, why is it that they, 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 they all treat him so well? Why are they so drawn to him? You realize that? Do you understand what's happening? The scriptures is fathers. Fathers, do not irritate your children or they'll become resentful. So if children are drawn to me as a father, figures you call it, what would be the cause? Would it not be because I do not irritate them? Why you mm at this moment? <laughs> would it not be because that I raised them to fear Yahweh? Would it not be because in their eyes, my father is worthy of favor? I will do whatever it is for him because of how he treats me? How much more stupid can some of y'all be? It is written. I'm talking to the church people. If you're sinning, you're offended. Too bad for you. It is written, saints. When a father treats his children in a particular manner, they will always favor him. You see the evidence and you oppose righteousness. That's how wicked some of you have become. In the church, Ashul told the, the saints at Ephesus, you are begotten by my gospel, so you are my children. How do they feel about it? He said, I love you all. Why? Because they could see in Shaul the care of a father. The nurturing nature. He disciplined them, of course. He said, don't make me have to come to you being stern here. But at the same time, they felt the love of Shaul. The emissaries of the faith, you could see in them, persons say it all the time, the love. Our wives are no different. That's why the young ladies call my wife mom. Because they feel the endearment. Why did you not address the fact that common sense will dictate that a righteous father will always have children who favor him if they're righteous as well. If you're writing, type this please. Righteous children never despise righteous parents. Write that. Righteous children never despise righteous parents. If you hate your father and he's a righteous man, you're wicked. So all of you who hate me for standing for righteousness, you are absolutely wicked. Including those who say Yeshua and Yahweh, you are wicked because you don't like my righteous position. You always have an issue. Because you're wicked. Righteous children will never despise a righteous parent. Never. Show me one. Next thing to type. I love dictation. I was, uh, I was a teacher of English for one year. Righteous children will never favor unrighteous parents. 
I'm solving your problem today. Righteous children will never favor unrighteous parents. You may be tolerant because you live in the house, but you never favor them. You will always be willing to do more for a righteous person than for your, for your wicked parents. Always. Because righteousness attracts you to other people. When young men, one of them, would have met with me to talk about my child, I had the, I had the grace, the joy, the honor and privilege of asking him, have you ever seen or heard me treat my daughter in a certain way? No? Good. So that's an announcement to you. We have to cross this line again. If you have never seen me treat my children in a particular manner, that's an announcement to you. And I love them because they're, brave, they're bold enough to do whatever. My daughters and my sons, they all have unlimited access to me and to their mother. <laughs> if she answers the phone when it rings. My pastor Woodley, <coughs> Evangelist Rousseau Pierre, all of my sons, I'm just naming some of you, all of my sons, all of you, Rodney, all of you, all of my sons and daughters will tell you if, if it's four o'clock in the morning, although some of them understand all then I may not answer them. But at any time of the day, my children have access to me. Do you want me to have a problem with my sons and daughters? Let something bother them and don't tell me. They know that's a problem because you have unlimited access to me as your father. You want something provoked from my children? If they do wrong and ever say to me, Daddy, I did not tell you I have an issue with that. Because there's no son or daughter of mine who could ever tell you they did something wrong and couldn't come and talk to me. I have a son. I won't name him. But he's, my, he's my son. This boy, this man tells me all the time, he said, Dad, he call me Pops. He said, Pops, I don't know what people say that you mean. Because the number of things you go through with me, man. He said, by now, my biological father throw me away. He said, you have an unusual degree of patience with me. I have never seen this in all my life, said he. So when he does wrong, who does he call first? If you're writing, write this. A righteous child will always be quick to find a righteous parent if they do wrong. You don't waste time because you see in that person, a because scripture said it, the effective fervent prayer of the righteous avails. You would always find the source. That he did this. That I did this. Apostle, I did this. And let me help you all. I protect my children. You will never in my lifetime find me going on a broadcast to speak ill about my daughters or my son. The most you may hear me say is, Regina has gone crazy. <laughs> if that's the case, Regina run off with some crazy somewhere and she's lost her mind. Because what I see on face, and it has to be a social behavior. If it's on social media and Regina's seen somewhere with her leg up, whining in some bar, broke your back, wherever it is, I say, hey y'all, that young lady right there has lost her mind. If you find her, tell her that daddy's home waiting or on his way. That's the most you get out of me. 
but I protect the integrity of my daughters. I have stood before congregation, the whole church, and said, I am putting all of my integrity as a preacher on the line. Shoot at me, not her. Twice. And they were dead wrong. And I said to the church, and someone left, I said, you're free to go. But I would not abandon my child. You are free to go. I am not going to abandon my child or expose her to your abuse. So leave her alone. But some people don't have that kind of memory now. I said, if you all want to leave this fellowship, have nothing more to do with the fellowship, go somewhere else because I am protecting a child who sinned, too bad, go. But I will not expose her to her. I put all of my integrity as a preacher on the line to protect her. <coughs> That's how I treat my daughters. That's how I treat my children. I don't make no broadcast and expose my children for foolishness. We will deal with this in private. I'll deal with you about, about this matter, but uh uh. There has to be a reason why Susan is so comfortable in the presence of somebody she sees as a man, as a father. And you as a saint, some of y'all, you ain't got the degree of common sense to see, what is this? No, you, are you ready to take an, a position where you want to assess a situation. And you want to determine that it should not be on social media. Where should it be? Where? Where should a matter that is social be ventilated and dealt with? Who brought it to social media? Who? accused a decent upright young woman falsely who if you want to speak about any of my children publicly I'll address you publicly just know that I don't care who you are if you have something to say about my brother Apostle Thomas publicly I will address you publicly Apostle Lambert, Apostle Besun, any of my sons and daughters, if you have something to say publicly, I will address you on no other platform. There's no private conversation with me anymore. And you saints supposed to know me by now. What I find challenging is, or interesting I should say is, the silence of some of you who are so close to me. I am paying careful attention to it. Especially leaders. Because you know what I stand for. I have protected you in your mess. The said young man said to me, Pops, this is not one month, two month, two year story. He said, you have never even gone to social media. Listen to his words. And even one day spoke of my sin. Sounds interesting to you, doesn't it? But I'm mean and I'm unkind and my, right. And yet somebody could say, all that I've done, all the things I've done as a preacher, you have never once even made a post on social media about me. Never. Because I deal with you in the environment that you determine. If you want to go on social media and act the fool, then I'll help you on social media. No problem. And what Bugs many preachers. One of them was giving some advice. You shouldn't have people in your house. And I said, no, not me. Uh-uh. No, not this one here. I said to him, all and any 
person who fellowship with me, they have the right to come to my house. And I thank Yahweh that I did it. Because they must be able to see how I behave in a normal environment. That's what box so many of y'all. Because now you know that people like Apostle Stephen Branham, I never saw him in my life, I told you that. And he came to live my house for six plus months. So when, when I was accused by Nick Connor and Dean Crombie and those, Apostle Stephen said to them, wrong man. I live in his house. So don't come with that, Dean. Dean, don't come with that lie at all. I have lived with the individual, observed him as an apostle, saw how he treats his wife and his family, and you cannot even risk saying that he's unkind. He's a wrong person. You have to do something wrong to him because I know him. Let's go to the final text today. Familiar, but essential. The Gospel according to Matthew chapter 10. Ready? Good. Verse number 21. Yeshua is speaking about what will happen to his disciples. And he's making an, an announcement to them as to what to expect as a result of dealing with him and preaching on his behalf. Susan is a preacher, one of my daughters who preach. And because of her preaching, because she's assigned to publicly declare Yahweh's word, more than anything else, more than anything else, she has to be of a certain stature in the eyes of saints. I don't play with her. I just told you. Because she preaches. Regina sings every week on the public platform. I don't play with her. They're not allowed to get away with certain things. I have another daughter, two of them. Of course, you know, uh, uh, most of my daughters are, are, are professionals in whatever, whatever, some way. Uh, Ketsia is a supervisor. I certainly don't play with you. You don't just certainly and be a supervisor. You will not speak in a particular manner and be a supervisor. You are not going to act on the road in a manner and be a supervisor. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. Cash is a teacher. Carlotte is a teacher. They carry themselves with grace and class. I have never been graced to raise yard fowl. I raise queens in training. I don't raise sense fowl. That's a scatter feathered fowl fed all over the place. You may not know those kind of chickens. There are feathers all over them, scatter, scatter, scatter. I don't raise the kind of people. I raise queens in training, princesses. I treat them with class. They know my standard. You don't dress in nowhere and people can see your whole be a belly button. Your navel for what? You gotta advertise some hole in your stomach. That's how I do it with my children. You are going to dress as if you are a wife in waiting. This standard was too high for some people.
and I tell my children, you know, sometimes if my standard too high, if you get out of my house, because you won't be living below my standard in my house, outside. So you're supposed to treat my child with respect and honor. I raise them with respect and honor. You don't show no the whole world what, 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 what your panty line looks like. Who want to see it? Why? Why are you advertising? I tell my child that's too tight. Take it off. Put something under it. Too short. I'm mean. I'm unkind as you call unkind. No. I am certainly a man of standard with my children are concerned. I tell my sons, you don't handle women like that. You don't talk like that. No, sir, you don't do that. You do not behave in this manner. I raise women of class. If you have an issue with my standard and with the, with the quality of life that I've afforded my children, get lost. It shall not be adjusted for you. I do not deal with people who were raised by gutter rats. I told you all that I got married to my future and now some of you will understand this in this whole situation. I said to my wife, as a young man, years, I wasn't preaching. Well, as like this. But I said that I know for sure that if I were to die, the quality of life, the manner in which you shall raise my children, will be secure in terms of my legacy. Even if you marry somebody else, there will be a standard that you set for my children that I know my name in them will live on. Let's close. Matthew 10, verse 21. A brother will betray his brother because of Messiah to death. This is Messiah Yeshua speaking here. And the father, his child, a father will betray his child because of Messiah. Children will turn against their parents and have them put to death because of the parents following Messiah. Everyone will hate you because of me. Do you see Susan's Cousins loving her and aunts loving her on, 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 on social media? What is her position in all of this? What did she stand for in all of this? As Yeshua said, what is the wrong in all of this? Do you see any, any, any endearment being shown to her? For standing for what is right? When you are persecuted in one town, Run away to another because of preaching the gospel. Yes, indeed, I tell you, you will not finish going through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not greater than his master, or than his teacher. A slave is not greater than his master. It is enough for a disciple that he become like his teacher and a slave like his master. Now, if people call the head of the house, listen to this, Beelzebul, King James said Beelzebub, prince of demons how much more will they malign or insult the members of his household so the people who are now turning against my daughter it has to be expected here's my question for y'all how could you be following Nigel London and those who hate me love you so much I always ask you that How? 
And everyone I've asked a question to in private have demonstrated in public that they do not follow. I asked them, Mount Olive Church in New Jersey would have gone to the, the end of the earth if possible to stain my name, my character and righteousness. How do they love you so much? Still, tell me how. And you two can come publicly and talk. What I'm glad about, and I would publicly thank Susan or Yahweh through uh, uh, Susan for this situation. I didn't know at all that so many of you in Linden who were smiling at me felt this way about me. I am elated that I'm finally able to see the comments that you would have made. So when you see me on the road, therefore, do not even risk saying good morning. If you think I'm insulting on Facebook, given the comments I saw from you, don't greet me on the road. I'm telling you. I needed the situation to see what your smiles really meant. If you are walking and it's very hot, you can't afford a vehicle, and you see my vehicle passing, don't look back. Don't even glance over your shoulder. The only time I may help you is if you're really suffering and I have to give you a drink of water to save your life. Because it will show you then that I'm heaping coals of fire on your head. But you're not, you would not be my presence. You would not be carried by me anywhere. I will always be a father to my children. There's no woman on this planet that stops me from being that. I remember when Shemari was a baby girl, and I'm saying this for a reason to some of y'all. She lived with her aunt, and we live in the same environment because I told my sister, you live with me. No, no, you, no, you sit under my roof. I was that serious, but my sisters as well. Stay with me. I'm married. You come live with me. When my wife was studying, a girl child, I would comb her hair myself. Why? Because when I found out I was having a girl, I went and started practicing with twine and rope and all that, how to braid hair. Because my policy was, if, if her aunt wants to fix her hair, she will. She doesn't have to. In the evenings, I would dress Shemaria, fix her hair, put her in the car with me. She was never a liability to me as a father as a little girl. Drive to the University of Ghana with, with my daughter. Have her with me all the time. Because that's my child. When my friends have somewhere to go, no, I can't. Why? I have a child. Home. Even now. Let's go here, let's go here, let's go here. No, 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 no. No cash or hand for me. You do not find me leaving my house to go anywhere just to casually sit and do nothing. So why would my children on me? Because they see this behavior. Of my children, the Regina's car is away. But when Regina was, dri was driving my vehicle, Regina never once, once, put a hand in soap to wash a vehicle. Lord have mercy, I don't know where you give me the children from. Never! 
I take care of my children's vehicles when she was driving it. My, my wife don't drive dirty vehicles. Hardly ever. Susan has a car. Who washes the car if it's here? <laughs> my daughters must understand that as a father, as a man, they see certain things in me naturally. This must come naturally. I know this one, this one may be tough for some of y'all, man, but hold on, brothers. It'll be all right. I ain't throwing no shade at you, but just, just stay put. Generally, my children, it's just my nature like my father. So don't be offended. I'm telling you what I saw my father do. Generally, my children see, all of them, in and out of the house. They see... <laughs> one while is coming up, huh? My children see if there's a plumbing issue, an electrical issue, whatever it is, they see their father going to fix it. It's for a reason. It is for a reason. They see a problem solver in their presence. Not one who causes problems. So let's close with the text. What Joshua Edwards say? Uh, uh. Oh. Yeshua said these words. Let's go to verse number 36. 34, sorry. Matthew 10, 34. Don't suppose that I have come to bring peace. It is written. Somebody put that hashtag. It is written. Because I now read for some of you to remember what is written. And you can't live without it. You cannot live by it. You cannot. That's it, mommy. Good training for my father. My father always solving some problem, fixing something. Do not suppose that I've come to bring peace, said the Lord Yeshua. I didn't come to bring peace to the land, not even your house, to the whole land of Israel. It is not peace that I've come to bring, but a sword, division. For I, Yeshua said, have come to set father, a man against his father. It is written, I have come to set a man against his own father, a daughter against her mother. It is written. It is written. Messiah's arrival was to set a mother, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, so that a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. It is written. You have wrong with that? You're wicked. Thank you, Sean Cooper. You know Banks, London. Generate my grandfather solve any problem. Saints, it is written. If therefore a parent is not holding fast to righteousness, they will always have a problem with a righteous child. It is written. Let's go to verse 37 so we could go home. Because I'm already home anyway. But we go home on this one right here. Whoever loves his father or his mother more than he loves me is not worthy of me. If there were ever a scripture I feared was that one right here. I don't play with this. I don't play with that one. 
For this reason right here I told you that if my father ever London were to turn from the truth, I'm finished with him. For this, this scripture right here. I cannot love him so much that I condone his wickedness in the name of being a son. My father must know. And because you go to church, because Suzanne's mother was in church for all these years, she knows this. And I'm addressing you saints for the last time with this nonsense. You cannot take the side of wickedness and call it righteousness. Type that. You cannot take the side of wickedness and call it righteousness. How could somebody tell me I said that I was wrong and said be right at the same time? This is written in your Bible. If your mother, if your mother wants to be disrespectful to Yeshua the Messiah, she is not worthy of you. It is written. Can you live with it? It's written. So any mother invite you for Christmas dinner in the next two months and you show up, you have disregarded Yeshua. How can you take the side of wickedness and say, okay, then because it's my mother, I'm going to eat Christmas dinner. With, is that written? Are you allowed to celebrate paganism in the name of honoring your mother and your father? What do you stand for? I rejoice in my daughter Suzanne. I rejoice in all of my daughters, all of my sons who've taken a righteous position. I rejoice that the cousin and all them said, Oh, Regina, cousin and all them, you know, you know good. Go, hallelujah. Glory to Yahweh. And I would like to see one of them crying because some cousin said something bad since it stood for righteousness. Then you see the other side of me. I have never had sorrow over being righteous. And I never will. I told you people, I have relatives, they're not my family, who because of what they said, not about me, about Yeshua the Messiah, they are not allowed to come to my gate. I will have nothing to do with them unless they repent. I have said to all of you, so whatever you hear people say about me is not a secret. I say to you all the time, if my mother is disrespectful to my house, she's not allowed in it. I don't care what it is. You could have fed me all your life. If you are disrespectful to my home, you are not allowed in it. If, and my mother would never do that, by the way. That's why I could use her as an example. If my mother decides to tell my children, no, but your father, Pray to Jesus, girl. You're not coming back here. If my mother-in-law tells my children, don't worry your father and mother, girl. We pray to Jesus. They're not going there and she's not coming to my house. And I love my wife because my wife would never oppose me as a man standing for righteousness. Now, why in the world must I be, be willing to lower the standard of righteousness to accommodate some fools in this world. When you're like, things will happen. I always tell you, the better thing to do is to just block, unfollow, or just run far away from Nigel London because you're never going to have a day off with, with me when it comes to what is right. I therefore would like to think that this broadcast would have brought those of you who, was, who, who slipped into opinions back to reality. 
However, it would be unjust of me to not end this broadcast with an announcement. If any one of you is of the view that Suzanne's matter that was brought to the public, not by her or by me, if you are of the view that the matter should not have been dealt with, and even Apostle Stephen Brannan rebuking Reginald Welch, which triggered all of this, and I'm yet to hear a word from Mr. Welch, I find it almost tragic that a woman has to speak on his behalf for so long. It is beyond understanding. And it's becoming a bit too typical. Women don't speak up for me. Because if she could have spent so much time to the extent that her daughter has been put out of my house, according to her, over this this is huge. I have never raised men to have women speak for them. Never. By now I'd expect Mr. Well to say, Madam, stop. You don't speak for me. I'll address this matter in due season at my timing, or I will address it now that you've made it so, 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 so much of an issue publicly. And he would, I would expect him to issue some public statement to speak to the matter in which a female is defending him and the woman is not even his wife. Now, how do you think girlfriend, as I call her, would feel? My girl. If somebody else's wife is spending so many days speaking on my behalf while I'm quiet, I have never raised men to be like that. And I never will. However, I proceed. If any one of you believe that Reginald Welsh matter with a positive and rebuke him publicly, believe that this Susan Hamilton's matter is dealt with in a manner. And I'm speaking to you, Yeshua and Yahweh followers. If you are of the view, maybe it comes to Yahweh Ministries, Core New Jersey, Core Mercy, National Guyana, Yeshua Says Ministries, or wherever you are. If you are of the view that this matter has not been dealt with in a righteous manner, and it should not have come to social media, or we didn't bring it to social media, I have two words for you. And I hope that you pay careful attention to them. Please, do not misquote me when you use them. Please quote me with accuracy. And if you have an issue hearing, would someone please write what I say? Type it. Please type accurately. Don't misspell what I'm saying to you. Two words. Get lost. <laughs> you are not entertained. You are not welcome. You are not considered. With that, I thank you so much. I have one nephew. He is unique in every sense of the word. <laughs> that's not background music, that's his phone. I thank you so much, saints. My father's typed something. When my father typed, I have to read it. Son, this is an excellent lesson on parenting, especially in the body of Yeshua. Thank you, Daddy. The world will never understand. Only those with ears to hear will hear. I thank Yahweh for using you so mightily. Blessings and shalom. Thank you, Daddy. Love you so much. Thank you. Now, you're free. As a result of the freedom I've given to get lost, don't ask me anything. Don't go to anybody ask me anything because you're gone. If you cannot trust leadership, do not follow it. Because you're a hypocrite. Marie, you're making some t-shirts. <laughs> Thank you, Marie, Mar Marcy Collins. Hashtag get lost. I love it.
<laughs> Bye, saints. Shalom, and I bless you all. All right? Do well. In Yahweh's grace, we shall speak again. I bid you all shalom. Bless you, Sister Fawn. Good to see you. Good to see you, dear heart. To all of my sons and daughters, remain strong, remain steadfast, and shine effortlessly. This is your moment. This is your... Thank you, Melissa. This is your moment. Shalom. Bye-bye. Bless you, Sister Al. Thank you, Parson.